Well, in the Jim Crow South, black school children were denied equal education. The lives of generations of those children were changed by the Rosenwald schools. And today, many of those schools are in danger of disappearing. Brody Carter reports on the efforts to preserve this pivotal part of American history. You're standing in the midst of history. Pine Grove Elementary, built in 1917, serves as a testament to the segregated educational system of the past. As one of the approximately 5,000 schools established across the South for African American communities, it symbolizes a vision of hope and progress. I walked three and a half miles one way. Muriel Miller Branch, whose father helped build this school, recalls her daily journey to Pine Grove Elementary. It was a safe haven and sanctuary for education during segregation. This is Jim Crow South, where everything is separate. Your worth as an African American was not valued. Before the Supreme Court ruled segregated schools unconstitutional in 1954, African Americans often had no access to public education or attended segregated schools in rundown buildings with makeshift desks. Buses of whites would pass by the blacks walking to school, spitting on them yep. and throwing things at them. That happened. Living in the Jim Crow era led to constant tension, making schools like Pine Grove Elementary part of the innovative Rosenwald Tuskegee Initiative a transformative force in the education of black children. Education was like our faith. They went together. More than 5,300 Rosenwald schools eventually spread across the South as a result of the groundbreaking partnership between Sears and Roebuck founder Julius Rosenwald, a Jewish businessman, and Booker T. Washington, prominent African-American educator and founder of Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. Part of the pedagogy now of education began here. They're designed to blend in to the community. They're not designed to be ostentatious, not a lot of exterior ornament. They became targets sometimes for the, uh, the whites that were, being, that were jealous about African Americans getting state-of-the-art schools constructed for them, but not for the whites. Sadly, many of these schools are being torn down and that history is being lost. That's why some nonprofits are working with architects to not only preserve this history, but also pave a path towards a more just future. Historic preservation architect Jody Lahendro is working with Miller Branch and her daughter, Sonia, through their family's association, AMMD Pine Grove Project, to revitalize the school and keep its memory alive. You can't know where you're going if you don't know where you've come from. In Virginia alone, Rosenwald helped fund more than 360 schools. The State Department of Historic Resources says about a third still stand mainly because of community projects and family-led initiatives. It really does devolve down to the local community to go out and save the schools. Architectural and, uh, historian Mark Wagner the with the Resources Department says development or demolition has caused much of the history to be lost, and grassroots efforts are crucial to saving those that remain to tell their stories. It got people into colleges. It elevated uh, the whole community and brought everybody up to, you know, middle class. As for Pine Grove, it's been saved twice and may need a third rescue due to a proposed landfill approved by the state environmental board. Still, contractors are working to restore the school thanks to the project and the help of the next generation. You know, Martin Luther King didn't walk for nothing. Uh, you know, Mary Anderson, she didn't sing for nothing. Maya Angelou, she didn't write those poems for any for nothing. Um, all these people, they didn't do all these things for nothing for us to just sit here. Nashai Jean Davis and Kamira Holman have stepped up to champion the cause of preserving this old schoolhouse. Their commitment helping to honor a significant historical legacy while offering a chance to mend strained race relations. Our history is being erased. Out of textbooks, the story is being rewritten to fit the current narrative. And now it's my duty to instill these um, gems, these, these truths to the next generations. It's, it's time to, to do the reparative, restorative work 
I'm not just talking about restoring a building. I'm talking about restoring a culture, restoring people. The Pine Grove Project is one among many initiatives emerging statewide and nationally to preserve black history. Now, it's an opportunity that we can use the lessons of yesterday that shape our present, fostering faith in a brighter tomorrow. I'm Brody Carter in Cumberland County, Virginia, CBN News. Well, it's Black History Month, and let's remember our history, and let's remember it very accurately. In Virginia, before the Civil War, it was illegal to teach slaves to read and write, to let them have any education at all. Uh, the Baptists had to go underground with their programs to teach slaves how to read the Bible. And, and you, you look at that history, is it any wonder that there was segregation in the schools? Is it any wonder that uh, the pe people in power uh, wanted to keep it that way and keep themselves in power? But they lost the, the bigger picture. We all can grow and, and be such a wonderful culture and a wonderful people if we just do what the Bible says, to love your neighbor, to do good to people. When you do that, wonderful things can happen. And the education of people, regardless of their background, their income, when you have this free, open public education, wonderful things can happen to your culture, to your society. You are investing in the future. My dream is the same dream that's been announced in, in America for generations, that we would be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's not have this be aspirational. Let's make it real. And let's make it real in our generation.